Well, good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of Love Not Fear. I'm Jack Cox, author of Love Not Fear. Yay! And I'm with my gorgeous co-host, Annie Day, who's written two scrumptious books. Orgasmic health and your guide to feeling fabulous fast. Right, so here we are tonight to talk about what we're talking about. We're talking about the Aquarius new... Age, 5D and Christ Consciousness. Yeah, the New Earth, 5D and Christ Consciousness and the Age of Aquarius. Yes, Steve. Um, I mean, you probably, well, you're, about to stick, you're more or less the same age as me, Annie. You were brought up with that song, weren't you? Oh, I was from here. Yeah, I loved it. This is and the, the moon is in the seventh house, and Jupiter aligns with Mars. Yeah, I remember yeah. it very, very well. I remember the yeah. musical hair as well, very, very well. Oh yes, I, I saw that live. <laughs> Me too, in London, at Leicester Square Theatre, maybe, maybe not. And I saw it at the Queen's Theatre in Portsmouth. Did you? Mm. It was lush, wasn't it? I loved it. So, um, at the time, it didn't mean an awful lot to me. Yeah, Just same. I don't know whether it did to you. Well, I think because when I was a student uh, teacher, I lived in Moseley in Birmingham, which um, is replete with lots of Asian, Afro-Caribbean, um, hippie type people. So I suppose I knew quite a bit. And also that my Aunt Margaret told me lots of stuff that probably my parents and nobody else would have told me. So I knew a little bit about it at that time. But obviously our knowledge has grown since, hasn't it? Mm. Well, as we're getting closer to it, and some people say that we're actually already in it now. Yeah, I've got um, both. It's, uh, it's becoming more, uh, more relevant to our lives. Yeah, indeed. So I thought, Annie and I thought we'd do a show on it tonight. Yes. Which should be fun. As usual, I've made a few notes. Okay, go for it, and darling. I'm sure Annie has as well. So I uh, have indeed. And between got us, back I'm from sure we've cobbled together. <laughs> I'm sure we've managed to cobble together a half decent show. No, we'll do more than that. It'll be spectacularly wonderful. So let's start by looking at the astrology, shall we? Yeah. Now, from an astrological perspective. Uh, the new age occurs, a new age occurs every 2,150 years. Yeah. Roughly. Yeah. Uh, we've been in what's known as the age of Pisces, and now we're moving into the age of Aquarius. Yeah. Or maybe we're already here, yeah. 2,150 years is the time it takes for the Earth to actually rotate between zodiac signs. Yes. So for the last 2,150 years, the Earth has been in the sign of Pisces. And now it's transitioning into the age, into the sign of Aquarius. So the new age of Aquarius will last for the next 2,150 years, approximately. Now in astrology, the transition period between signs is called being on the cusp yeah so i'm going to say that we're now in the cusp on the cusp between yeah. the age of pisces and the age of aquarius yes there isn't much agreement between astrologers as to the exact dates some astrologers point to 2012 as the start of the age of aquarius yeah and i feel some resonance with that because yeah, it was a huge shift at that time, wasn't it? Oh, absolutely. It was tangible, wasn't it? Big, big shift in energy that year. Yeah, massively. And of course, it also agrees with the Mayan calendar. Yeah, absolutely. But it's a, it's a pretty grey area, really. From an energy perspective, what's happening in the age of Aquarius is that we're moving from what is known, for want of better terms, uh, 3D consciousness into 5D yeah, consciousness. Absolutely. Yippee! Also sometimes called Christ consciousness. Indeed. Now it's important not to confuse Christ consciousness with the historical character 
known as Jesus the Nazarene. I've got quite a bit on that. I know you have. I know Annie has, this is my, this is my notes. Okay. I know Annie has prepared quite a lot on this, so <laughs> I'll just touch on it very briefly here. Yeah, I've done little brief bits on the age of Aquarius and um, on the fifth dimension, but I've got quite a bit on the Christ consciousness. So I'm sure it'll work out beautifully as always. It always does, Annie. When you it's and I get together, does, it always does. works out. Christ was not a person. Jesus was a person, but his, certain, his surname certainly wasn't Christ. They didn't do names that way in those days anyway. Yeah. You call into researcher Ralph, Ali, Ralph, Ralph Ellis, and I'm just going to mention this briefly because I don't go along with everything he says. No. But he claims that Jesus' name was actually, is that his Manu? Or possibly Isa's Manu? Yeah. And that he was the king of a city-state called Edessa. Yeah. And leader of the Jewish rebellion. Yeah, the Essene tribe. He claims this to be uh, the linguistic origin of the name we're all familiar with, Emmanuel. Yeah. Yes. Now, I'm not going to comment any more about that because I don't no. know that much about it. Now, that may or may not be true. But Christ consciousness is a huge group consciousness that Jesus may very well have channeled. Yeah. In fact, he may have been one of the very first, very earliest channels of yeah. Christ consciousness. Yeah, indeed. The second coming is not a return of Jesus, but rather a return of Christ consciousness. Yes, indeed. Which this time will be channeled by us all. Yeah. Christ consciousness is the consciousness of choice, of free will rather than determinism. Yeah. Determinism is the opposite of choice. It's action and reaction. And there's nothing yeah. you can do about it. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. Determinism is a, if you like to think of it that way, it's just a, a thought within the mind of God, yeah. just as free will is. Yeah. Neither a, a right or wrong. But as we have evolved, we've been moving from determinism towards free will and Christ consciousness. Yeah. I know that process is nearing completion. The frequency of fear, we talk a lot about fear on this show, don't we? Fear. Yeah, the opposite of fear. love. The name of the show, love, not fear. Yeah. The frequency of fear is a polarizing vibration. Yeah. It's the exact opposite of love. Yeah. Most people think that hate is the opposite of love, but actually, I believe it's fear. Yeah, same. And he does as well. Yeah, absolutely, darling, spot on. Jesus coming from Christ consciousness, choice consciousness, coming from an incredibly enlightened space, understood that there's no such thing as other. Yeah. He, saw are... right through, he saw right through the illusion of separation. Absolutely. And I know the whole world is starting to see through that illusion too. Yeah, sure. And that's what we keep plugging away on, on this show, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely, darling. The Piscean age was very much an age of 3D consciousness. Yeah. The age of fear and meanness. Yeah. And we talk about that a lot. Yeah. This was the, the time of the illusion of separation. Yeah. A time of duality where we focused our attention on the material world and on top-down authoritarian power structures. Yeah. This was a very low level of consciousness. Yeah. As we evolve, as we've been evolving, uh, we become higher dimensional beings. Yay! That's what's happening right now. It so is, Jack, isn't it? It so is. We're seeing it happening all around us. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? It really is. And we're seeing it in our own lives, aren't we? Because yes, we're absolutely. To, we're starting yeah. to react to situations differently 
than the way we would have reacted. Oh, absolutely, darling. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think because we're doing that, we're influencing other people because they see us doing it and go, oh, I could do that as well. So there is a, a, it's an empowering energy, isn't it? As Gandhi said, we're trying to be the change we want to see in the world. Absolutely. To Uh, lead by example. Yeah, indeed. And that's what's happening right now. We're moving from 3D consciousness or separation consciousness into 5D consciousness or unity consciousness. Yes. As we evolve, and it's a process, not a single event. Yes, indeed. We will no longer see others as being separate from the world and from one another. Yes. We're beginning to see ourselves in a fundamentally interconnected way. Yes. Just different fractals of one universal consciousness. Yeah, indeed. Different faces of God. Yeah. Yeah, we talked about this on this show before, haven't we, Annie? Yeah, but when we were doing crop circles, when we were doing fractal geometry as well, that's my belief system that we are a fractal of the divine. Now, I just want to say on fractals, uh, fractals is the latest thing. Now, people from earlier ages wouldn't have understood the concept, the scientific concept of fractals. So they would have described it in a different way. Yeah. They would have said things like God is within you and and stuff like that. Yeah. They wouldn't have understood. God is in every plant, in every cabbage, in every, you know, and everything that is a being, basically. Yeah, they wouldn't have understood the concept of fractals. Yeah. And a hundred years from now or a thousand years from now, we may very well have a better way of describing this yeah, phenomenon. But it'll do for now. It's good enough. It'll do for now. <laughs> it's the best we've got, so it'll have to do. It will indeed. <laughs> the 3D consciousness was the consciousness of the mind, whereas yeah. 5D consciousness is considered to be the consciousness of the heart. Indeed, and our spirituality. So that's where we're going right now. We're pivoting from this prominent 3D consciousness to a prominent 5D consciousness. Yeah. And it's happening right now. Yeah. This is the most exciting time to ever have been alive. Oh, massively. I feel really blessed that I chose to be incarnated for this time. I really do. We're so privileged to be alive right now. Massively, Jack. Yeah. 100% agree. Yeah, for sure. We mentioned 2012. Well, there was another very powerful energy shift at the end of 2020. Yeah. At the beginning of 2021. Yeah. That I'm sure most people here will have felt. Yeah. Uh, Focus especially around the month of February 21. Yeah. Where we had a a pretty rare, um, and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this right. You'll probably tell me off if I'm pronouncing it wrong. I doubt it. Stellinum. No. <laughs> a stellinum is when three or more planets are clustered in the same uh, single. Oh, single yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I do know what that means. I didn't know what the word meant. Well, that I didn't know it before I, I researched for this show. So it's all right. Today. We're learning all the time, Jack. I might even learn how to pronounce it one day. <laughs> I mean, my pronunciation is crap, isn't it? Let's be honest. <laughs> No, it's not. No, it's we not. know that. Anyone who watches this show regularly knows that Jack can't pronounce the shit. <laughs> well, you know, we've had some very odd Welsh words and Egyptian words and all sorts over the last few weeks that were, um, were a little bit tongue twisters, weren't they, shall we say? <laughs> yeah. Well, that month, February 21, uh, we actually had seven planets, seven planets aligned in the sign of Aquarius. We sure did. And the energy was really, really powerful. It was, and very good for transformation and for endings and beginnings. Yeah, it really, really was a turning point, wasn't it, Annie? Yeah, massively. It was, um, yeah, it was so obvious that that was what was happening, wasn't it? Now, this this time of change, this time of rapid change, and it is rapid at the moment. Oh, massively. Uh, it, it's proven to be very challenging for some of us. Yeah. Many of us are struggling to keep up and to withstand these enormous energy shifts 
Yeah. I know a lot of people. Uh, I mean, I, I'm the same. I have sleepless nights. When yeah. there's a much energy pouring in, I can't sleep. Yeah. You felt that too. We're ready, you? you know, we're ready for the, all these shifts spiritually, emotionally, and mentally, but our physical bodies are going, what are you doing? Have you forgotten that I'm really dense and it takes me longer to yeah. adapt to changes, whereas, you know, spiritually we're ready, emotionally and mentally, but I think our physical bodies are struggling. I've had to say to the universe, I'll do whatever spiritual work you want me to do in the yeah. night time and I'll take whatever download, but I have to feel rejuvenated in the morning, not like I've had no sleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so know. far, three nights, that's worked. <laughs> yeah. well, there's just so much more energy now, and it's growing exponentially. M massively, isn't it? I mean, it's really, really difficult for many of us. Um, but, I mean, it's, it's probably not quite so hard for people like you and me, Annie, people who've been around before. Yeah. People who've been around for a long time. We've seen previous shifts. Yeah, I think, um, you know, not only this lifetime, but we're old souls as well. So yeah. we know that this is all in divine and perfect order, isn't it? I'm just going to pop my other light on, Jack, because it's gone uh, dark. Brilliant. OK, love, yeah. OK, just have a quick check, make sure there's nobody else wanting to get in. Right. Um, I mean, we're already used to the old energy. Uh, we were, but, you know, people, some of us, we're already used to this old energy. Yeah, 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 of course. Um, people were, I mean, we were all born plugged into the old system, weren't we? Yeah. The system I call the game we did not devise. Yeah. But and I'm then sorry. suddenly, the age of Pisces leaves and the age of Aquarius comes in. And we've been being asked to unplug from the old system, the old age of Pisces. Yeah, yeah. Plug into the age of Aquarius. Yay! The babies that are being born now, they're born already prepared. Yeah. Uh, their energy systems are ready. It's, it's easier for them. Yeah, they're crystal and indigo children. It's harder for the they? old people. Yeah. Of which I most certainly do not consider myself one. Of course not. Of course. <laughs> of course. You're only as young as you feel, and if you feel 16, that's and I did tell you ages ago that my dad told me you should never act older than your shoe size. So I'm six and you're, how old are you? I'm well, six. A, ma a man is only as old as the woman he feels. <laughs> okay. It's a slight deviation from the shoe size, but yeah, I could go with that. I could go with that. So anyway, as I was saying just now, those of us who came from other places to assist with this transition, yeah. um, we, we, we never felt comfortable here, did we, Annie? No, we started. I've never, felt, I've never felt at home here. No. We felt stifled by this 3D world. And I felt homesick and didn't, didn't feel homesick for here. I felt homesick for my home planet. Yeah, me too. We knew we didn't fit in. Yeah. And the transition can't happen quick enough for us, you know. I mean, no. bring it on. <laughs> Indeed. Get me out of this 3D matrix. It's driving me nuts. <laughs> it takes a tremendous amount of resilience for people to make make it through these difficult times, these challenging yeah, for times. Sure. Yeah, for sure. And those of us, those little. Put your teeth back in, Jack. Those of us who came to assist are being called on to show a tremendous amount of patience, love and kindness. Yeah, massively. It's that Christ consciousness, that compassion, isn't it? Yeah. The age of Aquarius is going to be a more flexible and more expansive time than we've ever known before. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely, darling. The high vibration aspect means that we're now starting to build a society that's more equitable for all, not just concentrated on benefiting the few. Now, I know it doesn't look like that right now, okay? I get that. The old guard is making a lot of noise leaving. 
Oh, it's all coming unraveling now. It's all, it's all crumbling, isn't it? But they won't be able to stand for long against the turning tide. No, exactly. The, the beast's head has been cut off. It's just the tail waggling around now for a bit. Yeah. In the new age, we won't be building things just for our own benefit, yeah. but for the benefit of others. Oh, indeed. It will be an era of love and generosity. Yay! And I keep banging on about on this show. Yes, ditto, 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 baby. <laughs> when we flip, up, flip in our heads yeah. from fear and meanness towards love and generosity, everything will change. Yes, I keep indeed. banging on about this. And things are going to manifest a lot faster in the age oh, of Christmas. indeed. And For that sure. could be really, really wonderful, couldn't it? Yeah, absolutely. But the downside is that we're going to be, have to be very, very careful what we wish for. Yeah. And what we think and feel about the most. Yeah. If we're doing fear porn, you're going to manifest more fear porn. We've said this absolutely. loads of times. Absolutely. If we want to co-create our beautiful future and our amazingly beautiful earth, we've got to keep looking forwards. We've got to keep manifesting that and not keep having one foot in the fear porn. I understand yeah. we have to know what's going on so we can be prepared, but we need to not stay in the fear porn and just go, this is what we're having, this beautiful world. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, yeah. The old guard is making a lot of noise leaving. If we place our attention on them and the things that they're doing, we'll just feed them more energy. Yeah, exactly. We're not prepared to and do we'll that. Actually are we? be will actually be delaying this transition that we want. Exactly, which is the opposite of what we want. What we resist persists. Yeah, indeed. Another feature of the age of Aquarius is innovation, especially in technology. Yeah. Now, we've been seeing a lot of that recently, um, but we're also going to have to be very selective in the types of technology that we develop. Absolutely. We need more small scale technologies yep. to assist local communities. Indeed. Not big centralized systems. No, exactly. Technology and social systems will be more accessible to everyone, not just the select few. Yes, absolutely. We'll no longer be ruled by elites. Exactly. There will be a massive innovation in thinking, and it's already starting. Yeah, yeah. As we move away from a dominant left hemisphere, rational thinking, towards a more intuitive right hemisphere way. Of yeah, thinking. exactly, darling. There's so many people who just, you know, seemingly randomly start talking about fairies, or they've seen angels, or they've seen a unicorn, or a dragon in a tree. Yeah, more people see these things now. Yeah, more exactly. More seeing these things. Yeah, they're, they're allowing themselves to see them, aren't they? That's the thing. So, yeah, it's a really brilliant time to be alive. I mean, before the age of Pisces, of course, uh, these things were, were very common as well back in the, yeah. time, the Celtic times. Yeah, these indeed. Things were, these, these things were very, very common. Yeah. Um, it's only quite recently, really, that we've stopped seeing them. Yeah, and all been dumbed down and hidden. No, well, I'm talking now about the feeler part of the brain. Yeah. The part of the brain that doesn't have language. Yeah. Uh, it thinks in a completely different way. Yeah. So our also beautiful limbic challenged... system. Sorry? Our beautiful limbic system. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. We're also being challenged to have different levels of responsibility when it comes to what we think. Yeah, sure. We're being asked to have more positive, more optimistic, more forward-looking mindsets. Yeah, yeah. Our thinking will become more solution-orientated rather than problem-orientated. Yeah. And people with a negative mindset are not going to find the age of Aquarius to their liking. No. Um, and we've spoken before, haven't we? Um, some people say that the Earth is going to divide. No, I don't think it is. No, I, I don't. Really, I think united that. we stand divided before, and we're not falling. 
we did. I we... think that um, the world has always been divided. I think that eight and a half billion people live in eight and a half billion worlds, different worlds. I really do. Yeah, yeah. All created by their own expectations and um, and beliefs. Aspirations. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Um, so yeah, as we raise our um, our vibration, yeah. we will become aware of a higher yeah. vibrational world. Yeah. But it's always been there. Yeah. Just that we'll be able to access it even easier than we are doing presently. Yeah. 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 Now I've got a lot more notes, Annie, but I, I'm, I'm very wary of the fact that we're halfway through our time. Okay. So do you want to give us some of what you've got? Okay. So since 2020, Aquarius has gained momentum as an astrological talking point with the year's great conjunction in the air sign initiating a heady Saturn in Aquarius saga and the impending arrival of Pluto in Aquarius in 2023. Um, but what exactly is an astrological age anyway? And what happens when this mythic edition begins in earnest? We break down the possibilities to come for this era of unprecedented change. Hang on tight because this is where it gets heady. In the study of the Earth itself, astrologers observe the ecliptic or the Earth's orbit around the sun, along with the celestial equator, an imagined extension of the Earth's equator into space. The intersection points of the ecliptic and celestial equator are equinoxes, which again, we've talked about that on our show, darling. We have, yeah. Because of the Earth's imperfect orbit, equinoxes change position gradually moving into a different sign over approximately 2,000, or as you've said, 2,160 years. A complete cycle takes around 26,000 years to complete and is known as a great or platonic year. You can imagine these equinox intersections as starting points in the Earth's orbit, which slowly move backwards over time at one degree over 72 years. The age of Pisces is speculated to have begun around the time of Christ. Culminating around 21,000, 2160 CE. Yet some believe that the age of Aquarius is already here. I am one of these. In his complete astrology, Alan Oaken writes that the current transition between ages is much like the period between childhood and puberty. The process is gradual. Today, we are finding that we live in the legacy of Pisces and the promise of Aquarius. What are the natures of the Piscean and Aquarian ages and how do we know when we've crossed from one to the other? Aquarius cover, governs mass communication. Oakham writes that the only methods available for the dissemination of information prior to the discovery of Uranus were by foot, human or animal, ship, mouth or pen. The past few centuries have delivered a quantum leap towards cyber utopianism with the past few decades specifically blasting us towards the event horizon. Youth culture, a hallmark of Aquarius has never been more powerful. Look to contemporary rave culture as a perfect blending of ecstatic tribalism with technological and pharmacological innovation. <clears throat> oh, excuse me, I just need a sip of water. Mm. The age of Aquarius will shift the human picture on ideological grounds, rethinking our concepts of blood relationality, statehood, finance and value. Roll your eyes at the exhorting, cal exhausting cancel culture discourse of the Saturn in Aquarius area, but it's just the beginning. As we head into the heady debates over what living beings are entitled to, why do we work exactly? What is the point of money? If any age will yield interspecies, interplanetary contact, it is this one and to embrace our extraterrestrial overlords, we'll need to present a united front free from individuality, 
distinction and entitlement. That's yeah, so already starting. Absolutely. And yet beyond the assembly line nightmare, there remains great possibilities for a species entirely activated, no longer burdened by the servitude, martyrdom and victimhood of this Piscean era. Oakham writes that in this age, humanity is a, as a whole becomes the Messiah. Each individual can therefore find this light within and bring it forth to illuminate others <coughs> until the entire race of man becomes enlightened. I like that. Yeah. The way to this contained, clarified, collective elevation will likely be bloody, but a true Aquarian knows that there's always a new future around the corner. Do not indulge in whining about the end of the world. Just know in your heart and soul that the new dawn is already here. So the fifth dimension is a micro dimension which is accepted in physics and mathematics. It's here to have a nice and seamless tie between gravity, electromagnetism, electromagnetism or the main fundamental forces which seem unrelated in the regular four dimensional space time. As of now, we can't see the fifth dimension, but rather it interacts with us on a higher plane than we do. It's because of this that we can't really study or fully prove its existence, but we can feel it, can't we? We know, we know, yeah. Despite this, there are theories which have run through the Large Hadron Collider, which have helped support and suggest the idea of having gravitons transition from the four dimensions to the fifth one. Still, the fifth micro dimension stays because it's able to help along and support other physics theories, which make more sense when you take a look at how the dimensions themselves are constructed. <laughs> what is the fifth dimension in life? In the fifth dimension, we live in unconditional love, unconditional forgiveness and unconditional acceptance of ourselves and all living beings. Mm -hmm. Remembering that all you need is love. Love la, is all la, you need. La, la. All you need is love. La, 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 la. All you need is love, love, love is all you need. So I've got the crystal doorway for the Christ consciousness net. So I'm just going to read this. I've asked Simon Lilly, can I use all of this? And he said, yeah, go for it. Brilliant. OK. So attuning to the colour red and the Christ master energy can give you the energy to achieve your desires, get to grips with reality opening up to new energies, being oneself unashamedly, I love that, protection and empowerment and a release of any guilt. Red is the energy of gravity. It pulls things together and activates. Its core emotion is the desire to be. And so in all of the forms of manifestation and creation, this energy is always the first to emerge. It is the energy of matter, of being, and relates to our existence in the world and also to the earth herself. It is fundamental, literally, to all practicalities in everyday life. Red is the grasp and ability to work with reality. Red is the clay from which God made the first being, Adam, the red man. Red is the blood that courses through us and the passion for life that should be ours every second of our existence. The loss of red or of blood is a sign of danger. To say that our very survival is at risk. Using and maintaining our own red energy in all its aspects is our only protection from harm. In essence, then, red is the passion to be. It is practicality, the ability to survive and prosper in the world, protection from harm, union and support within earth energies 
giving us energy and zest. Yippee! Mm. As red is the first energy to manifest in creation and is the most physical aspect of spirit, so the Christ appears as the spirit made flesh and blood. As a symbol, the Christ reminds us, and of this we do need constant reminding, that physicality and physical existence is as holy as any other state of being. Red is not a patient energy. Red is now energy. If we were to allow ourselves to live in the fullness and holiness of the present moment, we would not only have the limitless energy of the universe at our disposal, but we would be manifesting the energy of the cosmic Christ. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the political development of Christianity favoured the promulgation of passive peace, waiting for salvation, suffering in silence until that time when it makes no political or social difference that someone has found freedom, i.e. after death. I like Simon's little rants. I think they're wonderful. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> this was in no way the teaching of this aspect of Christ, historically and mythologically, who appeared as Jesus Christ. There was nothing meek, meek and mild about Jesus. His role was pure, passionate, red energy, motivating, energising, empowering, and following the path of active peace, he was and is the peaceful warrior. Mm. The master energy known as the Christ contains within it the energy of the historical person, but extends far beyond all human boundaries of history, place, persuasion, and so on. In many belief systems, the firstborn of the creator will be manifesting red Christ master energy because the eldest child the firstborn is the first act of creation the first transmutation of the material of god into tangible physical form the ruby crystal in this uh, crystal doorway is placed at the heart activates the core energy of the individual as well as the physical well-being of the heart and the circulatory system the heart is the centre of our being, where we feel from, where we can be hurt most, and from where courage springs to act and to be. One has only to list the phrases and imagery related to the heart to recognise how central a concept this really is. Quartz crystals surrounding the body, we point out, out words these help to release pent up energy, which are focused on the heart. This removes any, this increases sense, our sense of worth, releases faults or imposed guilt and sin. They also allow the creative energies a pathway out into the world to connect with the goals for which they can reach and we can manifest. The symbolic significance of 12 in this net is obvious and manifold. From disciples, which simply means to spread one's energy into the world, to astrological signs and the archetypal energies of existence. Do not expect this net to be gentle and soft, but rather like a gust of wind blowing away cobwebs and sending a shiver of expected coolness down your spine. Although the Christ master red energy is powerful, it still comes from the heart of creation and so is filled with a strong compassion for all beings and all suffering. What do you think of that, Jack? I think that is absolutely beautiful. Thank you very much for sharing that with us. And thank you, Simon Lilly of Green Man Essences. This is the book I had it from. Right, well, we we will put a link to that book below in the description. Yeah, this is from Crystal Doorways, but I just, when you said about us talking about Christ consciousness, I just remembered that doorway and remembered that he really goes into detail with it. And it's, you know, him and his wife are like us. They research just absolutely everything and, and then pull it all together. So, um, yeah, I thought that would be quite useful to end with that. And, of course, 
he's saying again, like we say every week, all you need is love. Da, 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 da. <laughs> it's all we need. It is all we need, Jack, isn't it, for sure? We just, we just stop being rotten to each other. Yeah. Um, and then people can stop being fearful that other people are going to be rotten to them. Yeah, exactly. And we can break the cycle. Yeah. And I think we break the cycle by unconditionally loving, accepting and forgiving ourselves. Because yeah. we don't forgive ourselves and love and accept ourselves. Then we can't do it for somebody else, can we really? We've got to start with us, with loving, accepting and forgiving ourselves. Because your perceived mistakes were all divinely guided learning experiences. Forgive yourself, it says here. I really did believe that, yeah. Oh, I mean, ultimately, well. ultimately, you have to, we, have, we have to get to a point where we accept that there are no others. Yeah. We're, we're all one. All, we're, doing we're, all all, one. <laughs> we're doing it all to ourselves. Yeah, 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 indeed. Indeed. Yeah, we're, we're all one organism. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's Chief Seattle that says, whatever you do to the web, you do to yourself. Yeah. And it, that, it is that, isn't it? You might think that you're doing something horrid for, to somebody or not being kind or compassionate to them, but actually you're doing it to yourself because yeah, as soon as you do that, that energy is going to boomerang back again, isn't it? So yeah. you might as well just be nice to everybody and kind as soon and as we can, As soon as we can see through the illusion of separation. Yeah. Yeah. We, so we start to realise that there are no others. They're yeah. all us. Different aspects yeah. of us. Absolutely. Different yeah. faces of us. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. And we need to just love ourselves exactly as we are. In all our bonkers loveliness. Yeah. <laughs> and to realise that if someone is someone out there, we should be thinking in our heads, there's somebody out there has done that terrible thing to me, mm -hmm. we've got to stop thinking like that. Yeah. Another aspect of us has done, just done us a huge favour. Yeah. <laughs> Although it might not feel like that at the time. No, often it doesn't, does it? <laughs> but it is that. And, and with every challenge, I truly believe this and have done for many years, there is always an enormous blessing in it. There'll be some insight or there'll be a new way of looking at things or just helping you to be more bounded or more grounded. You know, when that thing happens, it's a reminder that we need to be putting our own oxygen mask on sometimes as well. The thing I always say is we talk about God as this great singularity. Yeah. No. If the, in every if blade that, of grass, he's in every broccoli leaf, he's in every asparagus tip and everything else. But if that being hadn't differentiated into all those different other beings, yeah, those different aspects of itself, yeah, yeah, it could never have grown, it could never have evolved. Yeah, exactly. It could have had no interaction, no experiences. We needed that red Christ consciousness energy, didn't we, for sure? Yeah, so this was a great idea, Jack Cox. This was I mean, great just idea. think how lonely it must be to be all alone, not even all alone in the universe, but all alone before the universe. Yeah. Yeah. How frustrating not being able to do anything with anybody. Yeah. Not being able to have any interactions. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. We are very, very blessed, as we said earlier, aren't we, to have uh, incarnated to actually be on the earth at this particular time. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, Jack. This is a really wonderful experience. Yeah. Isn't it? Right, shall I read a little bit more of what I did? Yes, yeah, sure, darling, go for it. If you've finished what you, what you prepared, let me just yeah, say I have a little indeed, bit more darling. of this in. Um, yeah, we celebrate people with negative mindsets, don't we? 
Uh, people will become less centralised. Power, sorry, power will become less centralised. Oh, that's a good thing for sure, darling, isn't it? In the Piscean age, we had a power structure like a pyramid. Oh. Where yeah, power good. was consolidated at the top. Now we're moving to a structure of power that's more decentralised. Yeah, yeah. Horizontal. Yeah. Across a diffuse Blockchain. network. Yeah, yeah. Across a diffuse network of interconnected people. Yeah, indeed. Of interconnected equals. Yes. All beings. This is already beginning to happen as more and more people are starting to wake up to the possibilities. The more that people wake up, the more they will realise that they had the power all along. Yeah. But they just weren't aware of it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, darling. I mean, that's why we permitted these pyramid structures to exist, because we just didn't know any better. Yeah. We weren't aware, we weren't conscious of what was going on. Yeah. The scandemic has really opened, even people like us that knew lots of stuff before the scandemic. It's given us a deeper understanding of the complexities of what's been happening and yeah. why we didn't see it earlier. Well, some of us saw through it from the start, but... Um, <laughs> no, but um, I mean, some people didn't because it, this was the biggest psychological operation ever perpetrated upon humankind. And it's been going on for thousands of years, but... You know, when people have said to me, some of my elderly patients said, oh, Annie, this is terrible, this is terrible, this is terrible. It's getting so much worse. And I said, actually, darlings, it's not. It's just becoming revealed. Yeah. All it's this had to happen worse. to wake people up. Yeah. It is a great awakening. Because it's I mean, been going on for years. We just were didn't you standing know. standing in, in your front garden, bagging pans? I know I wasn't. Oh, no, fuck that shit. <laughs> <laughs> my thoughts exactly Annie no I used to um, I used to end up doing a night shift for um, <laughs> a charity in Rougely so it got me out of that beautifully no I couldn't I couldn't I'd got a friend at the time who was a doctor and he said he felt sick every Thursday night that people were doing this and they didn't know what was happening behind the, the, the veil of the NHS shall we say yeah no, we didn't do that. Didn't wear a mask. I was sacked finally for not being able to wear a mask. Or I know you were. You said that. Wear yeah. a mask. Um, I've never done social distancing because it's shit. <laughs> Anti social distancing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, people will no longer submit to all this authoritarian crap, will they? No. No. Um, Yeah, it's, it's, it's already starting to happen. People are saying we don't want leaders anymore. No. And more and more people the, are aware that we need to keep cash. We're moving towards a, an age of personal sovereignty. Yes, indeed. People, people are becoming more sovereign. They're not yes. farming their sovereignty out to no. the leaders. Mm, not really sure. The dark cabal. <laughs> mm, exactly. Yeah, yeah. We're not that we've always had the power. anything. We're no longer reliant on politicians or kings or presidents. Exactly. Or CEOs or priests or rabbis or imams. Yeah. To tell us what to do. Yeah. We can think we for ourselves. Yeah, exactly. We always could think for ourselves. We were just yeah. conned into believing we couldn't. Yeah, in, exactly. All types of religion have done that to us. And the more sovereign we are, the more ascended we become. Yeah, and indeed. And the more joyful and the more love we have to give and the yeah. more compassion we have to give. Yeah. It's only when we're stuck in the fear porn that we can't do that, isn't it? You know, and we're not doing that. We can go. No, absolutely, no. Uh, one of the interesting things that happens when we start to come into our own personal sovereignty is we stop looking for authority figures outside of ourselves. Oh, absolutely. We don't, I keep saying on the show, you do. I'm in charge of me. We don't, 
<laughs> we don't need leaders. Exactly, we don't. We don't. We can connect the leader our own of internal me. compass. Indeed. And that internal compass leads the way, so we don't have to follow anybody. Yeah. And we know the, what feels needs, right and wrong. All that needs is to be able to live in a world without fear. Yeah. It's fear exactly. that restricts that. It is, darling, you're so right. You are so right. This is the age of the heart. Yeah. That internal compass is the internal compass of the heart. Yes. We are moving from the age of the mind to the age of the heart, as we said before. Yeah, the indeed, age of intuitive darling. guidance. Yeah. Our hearts will guide us forward. Yeah. Without having to rely on the outside world to make yeah. decisions for us. Yeah. It's time to trust our hearts more. Yeah. To feel our way forward instead of thinking our way forward. Yeah. But we've been taught not to do that, haven't we? Yeah. The mind is a wonderful faculty. And the brain is a wonderful tool. But the heart must come, the heart must become the commander in chief. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Our heart has to be, you know, that's what all of that crystal doorway on the Christ net was about, wasn't it? That this is the central the central part of us is our hearts. If we go inside and we're honest with ourselves, yeah. we know what's right and what's wrong. Yeah, we do. We do. And we've seen over the last two or three years that the outside authorities that we used to rely on have been telling us that right is wrong and wrong is right. Yeah, yeah. They've got it all backwards. They are. It's all inverted. They've demonstrated that. Yeah, they have for three over years the last now. They've demonstrated years, yeah. the fact that they've got Absolutely. it all back. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, for sure, darling. For sure. So it's time to look inside. Yeah, it is. To come Trust from your own inner guide. Generosity instead of fear and meanness. Yeah, yeah. So how much can I give instead of how much can I get? Yeah. Oh, without a doubt, Jack. Of helping the helping the Joneses keep up with us, as I keep saying. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, I think we're coming to an end. Um, have you got anything to say, Kenneth? Uh, uh, no, uh, no, Jack. Okay. Right, well, if you're watching this on YouTube, please do uh, like, share and subscribe because it helps us yes. to get our, me Be our message of love and generosity out to more people. Yes. This is how we change the world. Oh, uh, without a doubt. Help us get to our first thousand uh, subscribers, please. <laughs> We're nearly halfway there. Are we? Um, hmm? Are we nearly halfway there? We're nearly halfway there. Oh, my gosh, I'd be looking. <gasps> How amazing. How very yeah. exciting, Jack Cox. It's coming on. It's coming on. It's coming on. Cool. Um... Right, I'll put a link to uh, that book that Annie mentioned. Yeah, The Crystal Doorways by Sue and Simon Lilly, it's called. And also to the book that I, I quoted from earlier. Yeah, yeah. The Ralph Ellis book. Yeah. Which uh, I say, I'm not saying, I'm not saying reading. That because it's true. I'm just saying it's an interesting read. Yeah, exactly. Don't believe all of what he says. No, no. But I'm like that with lots of people, actually, that the majority... I'll go, yeah, 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 that resonates with me. No, that doesn't. So we do still have to be discerning, don't we? Annie, I don't even believe everything I say. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, Jack. I'm glad you don't believe everything you say or anybody else. Well, I think I do anyway. <laughs> and to quote from Richard Bark, never let any book replace your own thinking yeah exactly it should just be inspiring you to think outside the box really shouldn't it right let's wrap it up and we'll see you all again next week what are we going to talk about next week annie i don't know i've only just got back from um dubai and got back from beautiful Penryn. so my brain's still at the seaside i'm afraid <laughs> so I can't much help to you today but um, yeah we'll have a think about it during the week Jack 
I'm sure we'll think of something. Anything you particularly want to hear about, Kenneth? No, I have to. I have to think about it, and uh, and I guess I'll send you something through Messenger if I come up with something. Okay, yeah. cool, perfect, Kenneth. <laughs> okay, all right. Thank okay. you, guys. Appreciate you. Until next week. Bye bye. Namaste. Namaste.